Welcome to the second episode of our Beyond the Wall series, everyone. I hope that you are enjoying the series so far with our guest co-host, Alex Flanagan, from the Cryptid Keeper podcast, as well as the A Horror Borealis podcast, uh, as well as uh, my best friend is guesting on this episode, Adam, who does a phenomenal job teaching new games at the table. I couldn't pass the chance to have him on to teach this game since we both play it together, and we'll be diving right back into the episode, but first, some announcements. The Courier's Call Kickstarter funded last week. Great job, everyone. I'm pushing them to new heights. I can't wait to hear what they have in store for us with an ad adventure-filled, family-friendly story and music that really captures the imagination. Congratulations, Couriers. Secondly, we're running pretty low on reviews. If you have already left us a review, thank you so very much. It means the world to us to see new reviews. If you're looking for a new place to leave a review, the latest version of Podcast Addict, the podcatcher that I use, is currently accepting reviews of podcasts. We'll go ahead and add that to the list of reviews we'd be happy to read right here. So feel free to go flood that service with your five-star reviews and help us out. Otherwise, Apple Podcasts helps us the most, regardless of the country you're listening from. And Podchaser is pretty easy to leave reviews on, too. So head on over there and leave one for us and give us a nice stockpile to sit on to read when Amelia and I can sit down together and do this cold open. But for now, with all of that out of the way, let's get on with the show. Enjoy. In the last episode of Character Creation Cast, we learned about Beyond the Wall and selected which character archetypes we'll be creating. Alex was filling in for Amelia and decided to create a trickster fox. Adam was working on a self-taught mage, and I was creating an heir to a legend. We were just about to find out the answers to our playbook questions, so we're going to pick up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. I rolled a seven. So, okay. So, uh, the base, uh, my character starts with the strength and dexterity of 10. All my other abilities, uh, begin at eight. Uh, and I'm described as athletic and adventurous. Uh, the question, what was your childhood like? And the first question is, what did your parents do in the village? And what did you learn from them? I rolled a seven. So my parents ran the local inn. Uh, and I grew up meeting many travelers and he hearing their tales. Uh, and because of this, I gained plus two charisma, plus one intelligence, plus one dex, and plus one wisdom. All right. So that's pretty sweet. Excellent. And then does your um, table have uh, a symbol next to it? It does. It has a scroll. So that means I get to uh, create a... Uh, a feature mm -hmm. of the town, right? Yep. And we already have oh, an boy. in to start um, yeah. the game. So let's see. Um, so my parents ran the local inn. Huh. What What would kind of, because uh, an inn is a place to sleep and a place to enjoy drink and other beverages uh, and food and, and all that sort of stuff, as well as uh, live entertainment, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, so what what else would we have in this town uh, that would be kind of cool to go along with that? Um, and and I I am totally open to other suggestions if somebody has something. Maybe like an open air uh, market. Ooh, hmm. I like that. Yeah, let's go with uh, let's go with an open market, like a like a farmers market mm -hmm. type deal. Because that might be somewhere that your parents would like go on the weekends to get stuff for the inn. You know, like various oh, goods yeah. and and beverages and what have you. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah, let's go with uh, uh, a nice farmer's market. Good. All right. And then, did you want to go next, Alex? Sure, I can do that. All right. All right, so I 
I'm swift and quick-witted, but I lack hands, regrettably. <laughs> um, so my first sort of section here is how did I come to the lands of men? Um, and the first question in that is what sort of life did you have in the wilderness? Da, da, ba, da. That is a five, which is... <laughs> You wandered away from the rest of your litter and were taken in by a family of intelligent bears. Oh, so I nice. was raised by <laughs> literal foxes, and then I ran away from my fox home, and I was raised by literal bears. And then eventually I came to this human village, which I love. Nice. That is so wild. And there is one uh, that is the other uh, intelligent animal class that there is a playbook for is is a bear. So, like, if I were playing in a campaign with somebody, or if we had like a guest jump in, I could have like an intelligent bear friend who used to be yes. like my my brother growing up. That's yeah. Right. That would rule really hard. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so because of this, I get plus two strength from the bears, um, plus one constitution, plus one wisdom, and the cooking skill. Ooh. You, you, your bears taught you cooking. They did, I guess. <laughs> that, that's amazing. I remember having this conversation with my daughter when I told her about these bears, and she's like, "How are they going to hold? How are they going to stir a pot uh, and whatnot?" I'm like, uh -huh. "I don't know what these paws look like. I'm not sure." Just because I don't have hands doesn't mean they don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right, right. <laughs> I have a tail. Thank you very much. <laughs> and then I also have a scroll on mine. Ooh. Which is kind of wild. So what's interesting to this is that it's sort of, well, no, this is from my wilderness. So I'm wondering, like, what I could add to the town that in any way, shape, or form would be relevant to me as a bear fox. Mm. Um, you could you could add, like, a prominent uh, natural area, like woods or mountains or caves ooh, or something. Maybe what there is, is I think maybe... The town has like a wall, right? I'm assuming because they're like this beyond the wall is the whole sort of situation. So mm -hmm. if the town has a wall, I think maybe somewhere at the edge of town, like very overgrown is a like gate or a thoroughfare that used to be the main gate of town and which has not been for quite some time. Um, but if you're a particularly clever animal, you can sneak in and out that way. Mm. Ooh, that's good. I like that. All right. Excellent. Okay, should I go here? Yeah. All right. Okay, so my first table says, what did your parents do in the village, and what did you learn from them? So there's a good chance um, Ryan's character and my character, these first three tables, uh, which are the childhood tables, might be similar or possibly identical, which oh, they do talk in the book. It's okay if you get the same thing. You might have um, an explanation there. Maybe you are were siblings, or mm -hmm. uh, maybe if both your parents were merchants, maybe they were rival merchants or whatnot. Mm. So um, after those uh, childhood tables, um, if they are similar, then, then the other tables are going to diverge. Um, mm -hmm. And whatnot. So, okay. So I roll a one and it indicates that I am an orphan. Things were hard for me. Mm -hmm. I get uh, plus two to wisdom, plus two to constitution, and plus one to intelligence. And mm -hmm. then I have, um, I have a, um, icon for adding something to the map. So I'm wondering how to kind of tie something in there. Is there, um, um, maybe a particular individual who, um, Oh, maybe I want to kind of, we're not adding an NPC necessarily, so mm -hmm. let's kind of think about a, a location. Um, what could be what could be in town? Um, Is there an orphanage, or were you apprenticed yeah, to so and raised by somebody? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Well, depending on the size of our village, let's see. Maybe there is, um, maybe there is maybe an educational um mm -hmm location or maybe mm. maybe a, a small schoolhouse or something to that effect oh, i love that okay i'm gonna i'm gonna go with that we're gonna have a we're gonna have a schoolhouse nice okay okay uh so we're back to me uh i got my next question um how did do you distinguish yourself as a child um i rolled another seven um and it was you solved everyone else's problems and never mentioned your own huh um, but I get plus one strength, plus one constitution, and plus one charisma. My charisma's uh, already gained three points. 
All right. Um, and I don't have a symbol there, so that's that makes me done for this turn. Cool. So it's my turn again. My next question is, what brought you to the village? This is a D8. Hmm. I don't know if I love that answer. I'm going to roll again and then choose between the two. Mm-hmm. Narrow my options down a little bit here. Oh, I like that one even less. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So what I rolled is I first rolled a seven, which is you wanted to fight the ancient enemies of your race, which Hmm. I'm not really wild Mm -hmm. about. Um, After that, I rolled a one, which is your family was slain by wild (laughs) beast-like men from the north, which I like even less. (laughs) So I think I might just pick one if that's cool with everybody here. Yeah, yeah, powerful um, yeah, and that's the rule. Yeah. You can pick. You can completely pick. So one I'm if definitely going to just pick one here. I am intrigued mm-hmm. by two of them. Uh, one of which is you wanted to seek knowledge which your own people did not have, which is fun. Mm. Um, and the other is you made a foolish boast and felt compelled to see it through, which I kind of like. I think that's like a very <laughs> fun answer that tells you a lot about the character immediately. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that one. That's awesome. So basically, like I did it for the vine. Nice. <laughs> All right. And for that, I get plus one dex, plus one con, and plus one charisma. Nice. Very cool. All right. Okay. So I will I will go next here. So my table is how did you distinguish yourself as a child? And Alex, you didn't have a symbol next to your table, right? I did not. Okay. Nope, not for that one. Okay. So I roll a one. How I distinguish myself. Children often fight, but you never lost. Um, so that's a, an interesting for a mage. Uh, apparently, I was um, able to hold my, hold my own uh, and whatnot. So mm. um, pretty scrappy little mage. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So that gives me plus two to strength, and then plus one to wisdom. So um, I'm guessing the wisdom ties in, and maybe I knew knew when not to fight <laughs> as well. So <laughs> that's very true. All right. Okay, and then I do not have a symbol on, on mine other, so uh, as well. Awesome. So I will I will pass uh, that along to you, Ryan. All right. Uh, so my next question is: the other player characters were your best friends. Who else in the village befriended you while you were growing up? I rolled a two. Uh, the fishermen took a liking to you, and you swapped stories with them. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, that should be fine. Um, and I get to add an NPC for that um so i I think i want to add the the fisherman makes sense so far both of my characters are linked to fishermen (laughs) all right and then did you want to um i I guess uh, do you have any any thoughts about this fisherman um you know any anything notable about them um i think they're one of the um like the younger scrappy fishermen mm-hmm. of the village um they they're pretty new to the the trade um and and they they're they're kind of uh they've been passing down stories that have been passed down to them okay uh instead of like a bunch of stories that they've made for themselves since they haven't made too many yet mm-hmm. um and and I think it's it's always been kind of fun trying to figure out um which ones are the truth and which ones are uh, obviously not so much the truth. Uh, and and the answer will surprise you. <laughs> Get a little bit of a clickbait headline in there. <laughs> Excellent. And then, um, and then of course we come to, to names now. Um, mm-hmm. And that's the other thing. Like if you need a little time to think about it or what's a nice is in the scenario packs, each one will come with a few tables and uh, they all have a little bit different flavor. Um, so for instance, uh, the ones that come in um, the book, um, there's one that has, let me just take a look here. I think um gives you, for instance, there's one of the scenario packs says, hey, uh, you you could use this table if um, you need names, and these tend to be uh, more of a Celtic origin or whatnot. Now, other scenario packs will have uh, different types of names and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So if you're in a bind, you can always uh, roll and um, check with the, the game master and, and see what you get. But it's a, a D20. Otherwise, if you have a name, you can, come, right. you can use that. 
I want to I want to roll. Okay. Uh just go ahead and pick whatever table. Um and I think it's split by masculine and feminine names, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um why don't you give me both and I'll I'll just select which one. Okay. Um I I get so I rolled a 19. A 19. Uh so for a female, uh 19 is Terra. And then okay. um for masculine, the um uh the 19 is Waylon. W E Y L A N. Okay. Waylon sounds more like a fisher fisherman name than Terra. Uh, I always assume uh, Terra is something magical because of Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm going to go with uh, Waylon, uh, he, him pronouns for this fisherman. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Do you have a name for your character yet? Not yet. Cool. All righty. My turn? Yep. When you left your own people, you found it difficult to live with humans. However, the other characters became your fast friends. Who else became your friend? I have eight options here. Number eight. When Grandmother Weaver was alone at the loom, you would curl up in her yarn and listen to her stories. Oh my gosh. Uh, That's adorable. Snuggle in her yarn and listen to her yarns. Gosh. I love it. Okay, cool. So I get plus one dex, plus one int, plus one whiz. All right. And then I will add Grandmother Weaver to our list of NPCs. That's lovely. All right. Yeah. Great. Does she have any other name or are they typically people refer to her as Grandmother Weaver? She did have another name once. (laughs) She wasn't wasn't born Grandmother Weaver? (laughs) No, but I think nobody in this town who's currently here remembers a time when Ah. she wasn't Grandmother Weaver. Oh, I like that. Yeah, me too. All right. Great. Okay, should I go ahead on on, uh, my roll here? Yeah, please. All right. Okay, so the other player characters were your best friends. Who else in the village befriended you while you were growing up? And I roll a three. You went camping with the hunters. Hmm. So I get plus two constitution and plus one to intelligence. So I'm um, I'm going to roll for a name. I'm going to, we're going to say maybe the... um, the person I'm going to come up with here is going to be the the master of the hunt. They're the the um, the foremost hunter uh, of the village. And we're going to go with. Mm. Um, I'm rolling on the table. I got a nine. It's gonna it's gonna be um, Fiona is the master mm. of the hunt. Sweet. Adam will know that I'm partial to that name because it was one of my player characters had that name. Yes. <laughs> uh, what, 25 years ago? (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yeah, so that's fitting. Okay. We will go with uh, Fiona. Okay. Great. All right. So then my sheet goes on to say, you came of age and began to seek your own legend. You become a level one warrior rogue. You gain the class abilities, weapon specialization and fortune's favor and the skill storytelling. Uh, And then the table below will further define your class abilities. What have you learned? What stories did your father tell of his past? So I rolled a d6 on this table. And I rolled a 6. He sailed to faraway lands and plundered the tomes of Cain so old they are now dust. Interesting. Uh, that gives me plus 3 to dexterity and the skill trapping. Um, yeah, I think I'll go with that. That's fine. Cool. Yeah. All right. No symbols on your table? No, not for that one. Okay. All right, Alex. All right. You learn to make your way in the lands of men. You become a level one rogue mage. You gain the class abilities Sense Magic, Spell Casting, and Fortune's Favor, and the skill Survival. You have the Trickster Fox abilities Keen Senses, No Hands, Natural Weaponry, and Magical Affinity. The tables below will further define your abilities. How did you learn to become a part of the human village? My first question is... When did the witch first realize how special you are? Let's see. Uh, let's see. Number five. No matter how often she tried to shoo you away, you followed her on dangerous paths to collect rare herbs. <laughs> cool. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, I love that. So I get plus two con, plus one whiz, and the skill alertness. Hmm. Mm. Good. And there's no other icon for that one. Okay. 
All right, I will roll. Um, well, first, it says, you found the tome and began your studies. You become a level one mage. You gain the class abilities Sense Magic and Spell Casting, the skill Ancient History, and the cantrip Mage Light. The tables below will tell you your other spells. So the first, or the, the table indicates uh, who wrote your precious book of magic. And I roll three, a great archmage from the sunken kingdom, plus Ooh. three intelligence, and I get the skill forbidden knowledge. Nice. And there is no symbol for me. Right on. I wonder if my dad had um, plundered the tomb of mm. uh, the sunken kingdom. That's a that's an excellent time. But who would believe that story? <laughs> 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 All right. No symbols for you, Adam? Nope. All right. So my next question is, how did your father teach you to fight? This is an interesting uh, question. Uh, I rolled a six. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, you practice the old ways of war, wherein single heroes battle for glory and honor. Your weapon specialization class ability is with the great sword. Hmm. Plus two to constitution. And I gain the specialization to the left. So, um, yeah, I'm my apparently my heirloom sword is a great sword. Very cool. That owns that mm -hmm. owns so much. I love that. All right. What was the first trick the witch taught you? In my head, I've already sort of made an equivalency between the witch and Grandmother Weaver. I think mm. they're the same person. Mm. I don't know that that has to be true, but like that is, is what feels right to me. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think that I live with Grandmother Weaver and curl up in her yarns and she tells me stories. <laughs> I also think it's possible that not everybody knows she's a witch. Like everybody sort of suspects it. If you ask somebody, they would say she's a witch, but not because they have like hardcore proof of it, more just because they feel that way about Grandmother mm -hmm. Weaver. Mm -hmm. So let's see. The first trick the witch taught me was... How to reach any spot, no matter how difficult. Which gives me plus two decks and the spell Spider Climb. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, right. Um, I did forget to point out that I get to add something to the village in this question. Oh, go. Well, do yours first and then I'll do mine. All right. Sounds good. Um, so I, mine was practicing the old ways of war. Um, I wonder, hmm. I wonder if there's like a... As part of that 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 educational system that they have here, if there's uh, like specifically a like um, like a training center mm. for for warriors or guards or whatever, sure. Um, that like other areas will will send people here to do training since it's kind of out of the way a little bit. Mm. Um, and and maybe our village trains the the people that go on to be like guards of the main cities and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. No, that could be okay. Some type of training grounds or. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. All right. The location I'm going to add is I think that there is. Um, and we can make some decisions about this together. I just sort of have this visual image of like a tower, mm -hmm. like a tall tower that's kind of maybe. Um, not in particularly frequent use now mm -hmm. for whatever reason. It's like maybe it was once a church tower, but nobody really goes up there to ring the bells anymore. Or maybe it was a watchtower and we just haven't had need of it in a while. Um, I don't really care what the specifics are, but I think wherever that spot is, there's something specific about the way that the light of the full moon like falls into the chamber at the top of it. Mm. And so I think the reason that Grandmother Weaver taught me, like, how to get to difficult to reach spots is because she can't climb up there anymore. And um, so she sends me up there to, like, charge her herbs in the moonlight or her crystals or whatever mm. spell casting implements she needs. I like that. That's great. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. And I, then I am up next. Okay. So my next table, what sort of mage was the author of the book? All right. I roll two. A war wizard. You yeah. learned the following magics. The spell Burning Hands, the ritual Mage Armor, and the cantrip Glamour Weaving. And I 
receive a plus two to con- uh, constitution with those. Interesting. All right. And then um, there is, let's see here. Okay. Then I add something to the map as well. I'm trying to think what to add here. Um, hmm. Yeah, especially if magic's not like the most well known thing in the village. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking like maybe um, Grandmother Weaver might be one of the few people who, um, you know, ha- has some knowledge of magic. So I don't want to make something too overtly magical. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that. There also might be like different ways of thinking about magic. Yeah. Maybe there's more like magic as a scholarly discipline. And like the kind of magic that Grandmother Weaver does is probably much more like old magic. Yeah. Like folk magic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I, that's how I'm kind of picturing it too. I'm wondering if there should be maybe uh, some type of um, just center for the, um, maybe the village's um, small collection of written texts, uh, some type of, um, not a library, but um, mm. maybe maybe uh, some location where um, texts are, are, are kept. Um, I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is, is there like uh, maybe a section of the inn that has a bunch of books in it and people that, that stay at the inn or uh, that patron the inn can go and, and sit in a quiet area and, and read books and whatnot? Yeah. Or, um, or maybe, maybe it's attached to the inn. Yeah. Something to that effect. That could be. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe it's attached to the inn, because maybe, like, that's also where written records of the town are kept. Yeah, that's a good so idea. So it's like an archive, but also whatever small library this town has to offer yeah. would be found there as well. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna call, mm-hmm. I'm just going to call it an archive for now. Very cool. So that's a good idea. I like that. All nice. right, great. All right, my next question is, something finally pushed you to go make a name for yourself. What was it? And, oh, this is interesting. The player to my right was there when it happened. Mm. So uh, we get to choose uh, where would we be sitting at the table with one another. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Um, If we want to, I can just use my my Zoom chat setup uh, and go with uh, to my left is Adam, which is this way. Mm -hmm. Um, And to my right would be Alex. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so then, um, Alex, your right would be Adam and Adam's mm-hmm. right would be me. Okay. Great. Okay. So Alex, you were here when it happened. Uh, something finally pushed me to make a name for myself. And what was it? Um, a mysterious figure from your father's past came to town one night and the friend to your right also met the stranger. So, Ooh. and Alex, you gain one wisdom because of this. Nice. Um, and I gain two wisdom. Cool. I love that. Yeah, and this is where it starts to, the playbooks start to tie tie us together a little bit. Mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. That's really neat. That's like my favorite part of any character creation system is when you start figuring out, like, how do we know each other? Right, right. Because mm-hmm. why, why? up until now, like, several of these questions have said, like, you all are best friends, yeah. but here's a totally unrelated thing. Yes. So it's neat to start sort of figuring out, like, where those ties actually come in. Yeah. Yeah. It's convenient too for, um, for the game master as well and the players in that they don't, um, when, when we're done with the characters, there's going to be those ties together where we don't have to figure out why do, why do we care about each other mm-hmm. and why, why are we going to bother going, uh, anywhere together and those types of things. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. My turn. Yep. The witch sent you on an errand with one of the village youths. What happened? The player to your right was there with you. Let's see what we got. Three. Another witch who lives alone in the forest had fallen ill and needed aid. The friend to my right helped me find her hidden sanctum Mm. and gains plus one int. All right. I just have to point out I'm at 18 intelligence. Oh, wow. Nice. (laughs) And then I get plus two and a spell. Very nice. I get healing touch. That's nice. Well, intelligence okay. is very good for spell casting, right? It is. Yep. Yeah. So you're you're right there. Good. And now we have a healer. That's good too. Uh huh. All right. Great. Okay. And then no no symbols uh, for you, Alex. Nope. None. Okay. That's all we get. Okay. So let's see. Where am I now? 
So now you should be on that same question, Adam. Yeah, okay. So I am at, okay. So a spirit of chaos was drawn by your power. How did you fight it off? The player to your right was there with you. Ooh, okay. that's me. All right. Um, D6. All right. You withstood its blows while your friend sealed it beneath the earth. Your stalwart friend to the right saved the day and gains plus one constitution. Nice. I gain plus two constitution and healing touch. So we're going to have oh, nice. two healers. That's never a bad that's, thing. <laughs> that's very helpful. <laughs> All right. And no, no symbols for me. All right. Okay. So then on to my last question. Uh, last autumn, you visited the market at a nearby village and found an item that reminded you of your father's stories. What was it? Uh, so I, I'm going to roll and see if I like it. Um, and, and go from there because I haven't chosen anything yet. I can't read that. Six, uh, the key to a secret hoard, which would give me plus two dexterity and a brass key. Uh, mm -hmm, maybe that's not bad. Like my dexterity is my highest stat right now at 14. That would push it to 16. Um, and here's the min max portion of my brain kicking in here. <laughs> um, do I want to move it to strength? Cause I'm assuming great sword is probably keyed off of strength. Um, I can tell you right now, I will be no help in the strength department. So <laughs> just FYI, <laughs> I think I'm sitting at a um, cool seven. <laughs> Yeah, I think I want to move that um, to this other option. Um, a broken blade engraved with your father's name. Ooh. Um, so I gain plus two strength and the item that which will be reforged. I mm. love that. Which I love that description so much. Wow. That's a lot. Now, that's good stuff for... Um for a game master to uh -huh. figure out what are, what are what is uh, what are they going to do with with that item? Yeah, that's a very that that's a very adventure. fun gift for your local yeah. GM. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. I, like all of these, uh, it's uh, down the list. It's a questionable map, a small book, a frayed bit of cloth, and it's sort in in sorcel score. I don't know how do you pronounce that. In sorcel. In sorcel shield, mm -hmm. and a brass key. Uh, all kind of are kind of evocative of uh, story beats that you could mm -hmm. be going on. Yeah, there's some uh, clever ideas that they have in some of them. Um, I think mm -hmm. if I remember, my favorite yeah. so far was um, my daughter's. Um, uh, she found um, in a tomb a, a cursed doll. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that absolutely Ooh, creeped me out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There's some Wild. way that... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and one of the players in our group is is an artist, um, and uh, she drew this cursed doll uh, with uh, <laughs> with Adam's daughter's character. And, yeah, it's, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. Uh-huh. Great. And then do you get to add anything? Uh, um, I get or? to add an NPC to this list. Nice. Um, and I think it's very fitting to add a blacksmith. Um, like, not just a regular blacksmith, like a like a, a good, uh, like, coveted sort of blacksmith. Like, the, the big cities have been wanting to bring this guy on board into their cities like this is where all for the, the other longest time to legends come to get their mm -hmm. like weapons mm -hmm. reforged <laughs> yeah absolutely um and but he he or she um i don't i guess i haven't decided yet um or they they or they yeah um i haven't really decided but um they have wanted to stay here because this is their home and they don't want to leave their home um all their friends and family are here and uh, all the fame and riches in the world isn't going to uh, sway them. Uh, but they, gosh, they're talented. Um, so let's let's roll up another name. Um, I want to do kind of the same thing as last time. Mm -hmm. uh, see what inspires me. Okay. Um, I rolled a seven. Seven, okay. So the uh, feminine name is Enid, E-N-I-D. And the uh, masculine name would be Ewan, E-W-A-N. Um, also a Kelpie. 
<laughs> we keep mm-hmm. our secrets here. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, you know what? Uh, I'm going to say that this coveted blacksmith uh, is a woman uh, by the name of Enid. Okay. Great. Yeah, that's all my that's all my questions. Cool. All right. All right, my last one. What special token has the witch given you? And this is another D6 table, but this is one where, like, as soon as I was skimming over it, there's one answer I saw that immediately caught my eye, and I'm going to be sad if I get any other one. So um, I'm just going to pick it, which is number five. A magic rhyme never known to foxes before. Wow. Which I find very clever and fun. That's amazing. So I get plus two charisma and the spell false friend. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah. And I believe that's kind of a, a, a manipulation type spell. Where you convince somebody that you are their friend. That would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully those two extra charisma points will help me out there. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Um, great. And then I have an NPC sort of icon here, um, which I'm inclined to figure like who would be somebody that I have used this on Mm. before. (laughs) Um, Like, who would it behoove me to have tried to, like, swindle Mm. um, in this town? And actually, um, if this is cool with everybody, Ryan, I'd really like to know more about the innkeepers. Mm -hmm. Like, I know that you were were raised, like, by the innkeepers, but we sort of have this interesting thing going on where, like, your father has this incredible legend, but also like runs an inn. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious what the story is. There. I know, like, I right? More about that. I was just thinking about that too, because I'm like, yeah, that's right. My father was a famous, at least to him, adventurer. Yeah, has this wicked magical sword that right. that literally <laughs> attunes to the wielder, and and it turns out that it, it could attune to me as well. And, and then just like settled down, and or? just I guess just settled down. Yeah. I wonder. Oh, okay. So this is this is a quick and and dirty backstory of my parents. Uh, th- okay. They were both adventurers uh, mm-hmm. in secret, and my father used this great sword um, alongside um, uh, uh, my mother, um, who at the time they were just uh, adventuring companions. And I want to say that, um, like, he's he's more of the, like, fighty-fighty type. Mm-hmm. And she's more of the, like, uh, roguey-roguey type. <laughs> cool. Um, and they kind of fell in love through their adventures. And, and finally found a place to settle down in. Uh, and, and, then, and then had me. Dungeons are no place to raise a child, right? Yeah, maybe an inn, <laughs> an inn was a better place. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think I would also kind of love it if that tied into this blacksmith somehow. Mm. Like, I don't know if if she's like a family friend mm. or what, or like used to be a member of the adventuring party. I just find it very interesting oh. that we have this like blacksmith of heroic renown in the same town where these two like storied adventurers arbitrarily yeah. chose to settle mm. down. Like, I think it's fun if maybe it's like, well, we've spent so much time here in between missions, like, this uh-huh. might make a nice summer mm-hmm. off. <laughs> um, let, let's say that they are uh, part of the same adventuring crew um, cool. that that swore effectively like, you know, they're, they're allowed to tell stories about their past and stuff, mm-hmm. but um, like, the nature of it, it's kind of dangerous. So, th- sure. you know, they they've never been um, ones to corroborate those stories. Uh, so it's like, oh yeah, I was nice. there. So like, they never tell who they were with. They just say, oh yeah, me and some friends did this. And That's really fun. That also, to me at least, starts to kind of paint this picture of this town as being a really quirky little place mm. where it's like this this village that's off the beaten path. But we've already established like this is a place that people from the big cities like send their strapping young folk to like learn how to be the best at what they do Mm -hmm. and it's a place where like you know uh incredible old folk witches from generations that shouldn't be remembered are like still practicing magic and there's an incredible blacksmith and like some retired heroes of yore who just like (laughs) run the tavern now like this is a neat place this is like 
a weird little small Florida town <laughs> off the coast of like Fandling. Mm-hmm. It's so weird, and I love it. I love this little this little absolutely uh, slice of heaven. This is fantastic. That's great. Cool. Yeah, that's very fun. Good. So did uh, let's see here. So Alex, did you have a a person to add or? I can't remember where we were I think, at. I, well, yeah, no. So I sort of went off on a tangent of using my NPC slot to like flesh out the innkeeper. Song, gotcha. I oh, that was okay. Gotcha. Nice. So we'll we'll count the innkeeper then. Okay. Okay, great. So then now, okay, I may have to add something to what we got going on here with this unusual uh, village because I think I'm going to have a wizard tie. That's going to be nice. in this table. It says, nice. a real wizard from the south passed through the village when you came of age. <laughs> what did he think of you? Okay, so I'm going to <laughs> roll, see what I get here. Uh, four, he was amused by your first steps toward learning magic and taught you a trick. Uh, plus two to charisma and the ritual unseen servant. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, and then I add an NPC. So I'm trying thinking well the obvious thing to add would be this wizard but i'm picturing this wizard w- was only temporarily coming through here mm-hmm. so would that be a, an appropriate person to add to the list um we're more going for the villagers here mm-hmm. um why did the wizard come here yeah. was there somebody that they were visiting good question good question Mm. The wizard from uh, the part of the uh, retired adventuring party lives here. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Well, we, what we do you guys? We've what? got like a whole. We've got like a whole next gen yeah, story going. Right. On. Like we've we've built really ourselves do. into this narrative that's actually really fascinating. I like that. Of like a group of young people mm-hmm. who are standing in the footsteps of like some phenomenal origins, right. but like r- having been raised in a sleepy little town, like it's not that our parents wanted this for right. us, but we couldn't kind of really help it. Uh-huh. <laughs> How about, it. um, what if I have say, okay, what if it's my godfather who, mm-hmm. um, maybe he helps maintain the archive. He's semi-retired yeah. and, um, maybe he is rumored to have cast a spell or two. And this uh, wizard that. from the South hmm. was, was here visiting, was visiting him. <laughs> After a few drinks, spells start flying. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mugs of ale are floating around. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. I, we all enchanted things we regret. I'm rolling on the table, and the name is Arden, A R D E N. I'm so I'm gonna go with that. Ooh. So Arden is gonna be my godfather, and he kind of runs the. He helps maintain the archive, and um, but it's also um, kind of semi-retired. Okay, I'll call him an archivist. There we go. Okay. Great. And uh, then that's it for my tables. Awesome. Uh, so I was looking at my equipment, and uh, one of the things I wanted to point out uh, that's that's probably different from everybody else is uh, this sword of my father's. Mm. Uh, mm. So the description in the book is, this blade has been passed down for generations and carries great magic. It grows in power with its wielder matching the might of its bearer. The sword gains a new magical property for each level of the character using it. Wow. Uh, the following table describes these powers. Um, and the sword always has the properties of its wielder's level and all previous levels. Um, so at level one, uh, the sword is magical, but has no bonuses to hit or damage. It can, however, harm any creatures immune to mundane attacks. Um, also, the sword always finds its way home when it's lost. Hmm. Uh, it is never apart from its rightful owner for more than a day or two. That's awesome. That is really awesome. That rules. Yeah. And then as I gain levels, it gains bonuses to hit and damage. Uh, level three, the sword also sends vague dreams to its wielder when there is what? grave danger in the near future. Hmm. Uh, the specifics of such dreams are left up to the GM. This is awesome. I like that. So that's my sword. I like that. That's really awesome. Yeah, I love that. All right. So um, at the bottom of our playbooks, it tells us what we need to do to flesh out the rest of our character. Um, So jot down your skills. Here's your uh, equipment that comes with it. Uh, How many silver pieces? Um, You pick your alignment. So lawful, chaotic, or neutral, like we talked about before. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I'm going to go with neutral for myself. Uh, you get a base attack bonus uh, and your initiative. 
modifier your armor class. Um, and then I start with five fortune points because I believe I have that trait that gives me extra fortune. And then it has uh, saving throws on the back of this booklet for what our saving throws start at. Mm-hmm. And then we're pretty much done with character creation. Yeah. Yep. That's pretty cool. All right. So uh, then I guess the only thing we need to know from uh, both of you are what, what alignments are you going with your characters? And then we have to name these people. Got to name them. Yeah. I know. Um, I think neutral makes the most sense as an alignment. Just sort of, you know, I'm vibing here. Yeah. And I, yeah, I'm thinking... I just, yeah, my character, he's he is neutral. I want to say something different, but I just feel that he's neutral. That makes a lot of sense. Um, And I think for names, I, I want to roll a random name. Okay. Um, Kind of want to do the same thing as before mm-hmm. Um, and, and see what speaks to me. I rolled a one. Okay. So the feminine name would be Elise, A-I-L-I-S-E. And the uh, masculine name would be Ambrose, A-M-B-R-O-S-E. Interesting. Those are both kind of powerful names. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, you know what? I'm going to go with Elise. Uh, she, her pronouns. Right on. Daughter of the innkeeper. Quote, unquote, innkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, is it my turn? Yep. Um, so my name is Bettany Fiddlefern Crushpaw. Nice. Crushpaw was my bear family's last name, so I, of course, amended it onto the end of mine as a as a show of respect <laughs> and um and love for my my parents. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I think that Bettany uses they them pronouns because like what use is gender to a fox? Um, Betany just incidentally is a sacred Celtic herb that was used to guard against evil spirits and mischief mm. and derives from word meaning good for the head, which I thought was very fun for like a clever sort of mischievous fox. Yeah. I, I like just that. need to point out, I love uh, Barrent. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Hmm. All right. How about you, Adam? Okay. My character, I'm going with the, the f- first name is going to be Thill. T H Y L L. I don't know. I, I don't have a um, a good last name thought of yet. Um, well, you were an orphan, right? Oh, that's right. Maybe. Interesting. Maybe. Maybe you haven't decided on a last yeah, name yet. <laughs> maybe I'm just called Thill right now. We'll do that. Yeah. Right now, um, I haven't been given a family name. Cool. Great. Okay. All right. Oh, and then in our um, uh, our playbooks, it also describe if you um, whatever your starting equipment is too. Mm-hmm. Usually, that's about the third paragraph. Yeah. The interesting thing I had in there is uh, the sword and a single coin made from pure platinum. Hmm. Um, which is kind of cool. Uh, also, like, hey, how did how did you get that as the you know daughter of a innkeeper? They're, they're <laughs> yeah, not right. that rich. I'll right. never tell. Let me see. What do I have? Do I have anything? Oh, I have no equipment. Aw. It's okay. I also have no hands. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do, you can do like, uh, there's some special fox magic that you get. Yeah, and I have a magic rhyme that no other foxes have ever known mm-hmm. before. That's awesome. I wonder if your magic is rhyme-based. Like, <laughs> oh my god. I'm just like a gosh darn Andrew Lloyd Webber cat. I'm a, I'm a freaking jellical cat. I just have to like rhyme a bunch of nonsense about myself before I can oh, cast no. any spells. That sounds terrible. Uh-huh. That's for the uh the musical foxes in this world. <laughs> All right. Slash bears. Yep. Oh my. Awesome. Very cool. Well, we- I can also assist mages. So, like, I am myself a rogue mage, but I'm also a familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Your own familiar. Which is very yeah. fun. That's Good. amazing. I love this. This is such a, a a fun group that we've made. I agree. Ooh, and I get five fortune points, mm-hmm. which is very cool. Yeah, that's excellent. Because I'm a fox. Yeah, you started with, with uh, three, Adam? Yes, I start with three fortune points. All right. Mm-hmm. And I can bite for 1d6 damage. Nice. <laughs> cool. 
Oh, and I get a plus two bonus to ability score checks that involve, like, sight and smell. Mm. Very like nice. That. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. We made some people. We made two people and a fox. <laughs> <laughs> Foxes are people, too. <laughs> <laughs> We, we have a, a hard stance on this podcast that uh, all sentient beings are people. I love that. So thank you so much for joining us for our Beyond the Wall character creation episodes. Episode right now. It will soon be episodes. <laughs> it, Not to speak too much for my future self, but I have a good <laughs> feeling about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now I know you don't have much of a presence on social media, Adam. Uh, but is there a way that people can get a hold of you or is through me their best option for now? Yeah, it'll probably be, be through you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so if you have questions to field for Adam, uh, field them through me and I will uh, text him them relentlessly. <laughs> or you could ask me and I'll message Ryan. <laughs> yeah, that works too. <laughs> um, and that's a good point. Alex, where can people find you online? On Twitter perpetually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never leave. <laughs> Even when I should. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Coffee Detective. It's C-O-F-F-3-3 Detective. Mm. It is how you spell detective. It is not how you spell coffee. But <laughs> string them all together and you'll find me somewhere. Um, you can also find me on the Cryptid Keeper podcast. Or as previously mentioned, you can find me right here on the One Shot Network on A Horror Borealis. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you both for, for joining us. Thank you, Alex, for uh, filling in for Amelia. Uh, and thank you to everyone for listening. Uh, please join us again for our next episode uh, for our discussion block. All right. Thank you very much. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. 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 Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Neo Scum. Neo Scum is a narrative comedy podcast featuring five Chicago improvisers antagonizing their way through the role-playing classic Shadowrun. It follows a group of misfits and outsiders, Z, the acerbic cyber troublemaker, Pox, the candy junkie klepto from across the pond, Tech Wizard, the public access actor with a petulant thirst for adventure, and Dak Rambo, the nastiest trucker this side of the Robo Mason Dixon. Join the irascible Neo Scum crew on a puerile rockin' road trip through a weirdo world of tomorrow, doling out street justice to every deeb they encounter, whether they deserve it or not.